how do we know when Jesus was crucified? This is just a little bit of trivia. It's partly uh, from this gospel account because they cite that it's 46 years since the temple started to be reconstructed, that is, by Herod the Great, and that would bring us to about 30 or 33 AD. So if you ever wonder that, you can, or you get asked, you can say, well, it's from the gospel. That's how we do it. In our contemporary world, especially the one concerned with holistic health, cleanses seem to be all the rage. It might be the green smoothie cleanse. It might be the juice cleanse or the water only cleanse or the no food at all cleanse. And it's certainly an idea that is perhaps not without some merit because periodically we probably could all benefit from that reboot of sorts to try to maintain and hopefully improve our health, abstaining from things that we know in excess could be harmful, like sugar and fat and caffeine and alcohol. It is then perhaps easy to see how Lent might resemble a reboot, at least in its most basic aspect of being a time to focus on fasting and abstinence, eating less, and giving up some things that we find enjoyable, but perhaps we know aren't always beneficial. Things like chocolate and coffee and liquor. Indeed, things that can be potentially addicting. So Lent encourages us to practice self-denial, but for the purpose of gaining greater self-control. But our Lenten reboot is not only about disciplining the body through fasting and self-denial so that we might lose a few pounds or get our blood sugar under better control or indeed be healthier, but rather Lent's disciplines are primarily intended to help free us from the demands of the body, the cravings of the body, so as to be better able to focus on the condition of our souls. Indeed, Lent teaches us that if we stop ingesting the things that we more or less mindlessly take in, we may realize that the void that we are either consciously or more likely subconsciously trying to fill is actually a void that can only be filled by God. That is how Lent is distinctly different from a health reboot alone, because Lent encourages fasting and bodily discipline in order that we might create greater room for God in our souls and thus in our lives. In the gospel today, Jesus creates quite a stir by cleansing the temple, an act that the authors of the synoptic gospels, being those of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, suggest led to his full and final rejection by the religious authorities in Jerusalem. And so ultimately, the cleansing of that temple would be what immediately led to his arrest and, of course, his crucifixion. Yet Jesus had to do what he did, because what was the temple? The temple was the very dwelling place of God on earth. And in truth, it was being desecrated by commerce. And so Jesus drives out those who were making money in an exploitative way on the pilgrims who had come to that temple to encounter God in prayer and offer sacrifice. But with Jesus' own death and resurrection, 
and the resulting release of the Holy Spirit upon the church at Pentecost, and thereafter the bestowal of that same Spirit throughout the ages in the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, it then becomes the soul of the believer belonging to the body of Christ that becomes God's ultimate dwelling place on earth, indeed, the temple of the Lord. Thus, these are the temples about which we need to be very vigilant. And these are the temples that admittedly need cleansing from time to time. And that cleansing is what we are called to engage in each Lent. As flawed and broken human beings, we are all vulnerable to falling into habits of speech, thought, and action that can crowd out the rightful place of the living God in our hearts and souls. And the less we are vigilant, we are quite capable of being blind to that truth. Indeed, as human beings, we are prone to go about mindlessly thinking ourselves quite good enough, and thus perhaps consequently not making the effort we need to make to look more deeply and closely to discover that that isn't quite true. Many are able to delude themselves that because they don't fall into serious sin, that they really don't have any need for self-examination and sacramental confession and the self-correction and reordering enabled by those penitential disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Disciplines which are in fact encouraged always, but most especially during this annual season of Lent. What is really needed is for each and every one of us, without any exception, to summon the courage to look at ourselves fully in a spiritual mirror, undisguised by any pretensions, pious or otherwise. And if when we look at ourselves in that mirror, we don't see the exact image of Jesus himself reflecting back at us. If we don't see in ourselves Christ in his self-sacrificing service, Christ in his perfect charity, Christ in his kindness and compassion, Christ in his mercy and forgiveness, then we know that the temple that is our own soul is in need of some cleansing. So if we haven't already done so over the past two weeks, let us summon that courage to take that deeply honest look at ourselves and then commit ourselves to continue with renewed zeal in this, our annual Lenten reboot not just as a time of abstaining from various treats in which we like to indulge, but a time to say no to bodily cravings of every sort for the purpose of freeing ourselves for God. Indeed, growing in his grace through sacramental confession, through penance, and through charity so that God may fully dwell within us, unencumbered by any sinful clutter in a newly cleansed temple that is our soul.